Hi, uh, I just want to talk about how to derive the, the variance of the CAPM. So there's a few things we have to know, right? So this is a very basic formula that, you know, all the CFA level one should know. So a, it basically is saying, okay, the, the return of a stock is equal to some kind of alpha, which is not explained by any part of the equation, um, times the beta times the uh, market premium plus a unspecific term, um, which is uh, the idiosyncratic variance um, of the company that is not explained by the market, perhaps by, let's say, um, some kind of unknown variable that is hidden in in the return of the company. So EI would be the expected return of this um, variance, of this um, unknown is zero, okay? And if you multiply the second things we have to know, um, to do, for to derive the variance is that EI times the um, this is the market return minus the average market return. So this term is going to be zero. So how do we derive um, when we talk about volatility or the risk of certain um, certain asset, right? So this is the expected return. So expected return equal to expected return of the whole thing. I R M plus C I. Okay, and we know that um, by definition, this is equal to expected return of plus expected return of beta R M plus expected V I. Okay, so we have already know that this is a constant. So this is a known part. So expected return of a known, that's just a constant. And this, we know that this is equal to zero. So um, after simplification, this is what we have so far. Um, so the variance by definition would be, so, so let's say this is expected return of this. Let's, let's call this, um, formula number one, let's say, okay? So the definition of variance would be um, RI minus RI, so the average expected return, let's call this variance square, okay? So this is the variance. So how do we, how do, we do this? So we have You know, basic substitution above R alpha plus beta R M plus C I minus um, beta plus beta R M. Since it is the average, we're not going to have the, the E I term. And we have the whole thing square, okay? And um, and we do some algebra here, um, the alpha cancel out, so we are left with, um, let's see, expected return of beta i, uh, r m minus r m average, and this is the unknown term and whole thing square and we also so we we substitute this again you know kind of like expand this we have the m square plus two two beta um, um, um. Right. This is also expected return plus expected return e i uh, square. Sorry, I'm missing a e i here because two times um, the whole thing here. So this is where they come from. Okay, so. You know, we are, we have already made the definition here that this whole term here, 
expected return of um, the RM minus the average market return times the EI is equal to zero. So this whole thing basically cancel out. So we are left with um, beta I E R M minus R M square plus E times E I square. Okay. So what what is this? So basically this is the definition of market variance. Okay. So you can write this as plus um you know this is also the variance so basically you can also write this as this okay so th this is how you come up with the total variance right of the stock is equal to systematic risk sys sorry systematic plus non systematic Okay, and in finance, we're a little bit sloppy about um, describing risk, but basically, as someone in the forum has already pointed out, um, if it is a variance, then you can add them up easily, but um, you can't do it if you square, you know, square with the whole thing, you can't add the individual terms um, very easily, so that's a problematic when you're doing um, calculation in, in a pricing engine or whatever. So to your second questions, right? Um, in terms of beta, we always talk about beta in, in respect to a, a market um, portfolio or in some kind of index, right? Against another return. So let's say if we say, okay, Apple has a beta of 1.2 in respect to S&P 500 index. That means, let's say if um, the return for S&P for, uh, 500 is, let's say 10% 10, 10 for, uh, for one particular for one particular month and for Apple is you know twelve percent. So this is kind of like the slope for Apple against the S P five hundred. Let's say you have a really really um, speculative stock or a speculative index or a um, leverage index. Let's say one of my favorite is um, biotech. 2x leverage, right? BIB. Um, this beta could be, let's say, 2, right? So we know the slope of 2 is like this, right? So this is the beta um, or security SM, security market line, right? Something that um, you should have read in, in the curriculum. So Every time it's gone up 10% 10, 10 at the S&P, it goes up 20%. That's why the slope is so much higher. So this for, for beta, is always in respect to something else. So the curriculum claimed that the insurance company has a negative beta. So what, is, what, could, it be, what could it mean, right? So let's say um, insurance, insurance company, right? They, they are very, very interested in the interest rate because all of their product is priced based on the um, some kind of um, inflation product or whatever, right? So interest rate. So let's say their, so the, uh, the, 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 their profit is tied to interest rate. If the interest rate has gone up, that means it's good for them because um, their, you know, their, um, their, their liability claim in the future is gonna go down. So there's an inverse relationship between interest rate and um, the product they're, they're selling. So let me remind you about the bond prices and interest rate uh, relationship. They probably something that you have seen in the fixed income um, session already. So let's say this is bond prices. And that's the liability that the insurance company has written to the policyholder. And as you can see, as the interest rate has go up, um, the liability that the insurance owned to the policyholder has actually gone down. So that's why, as you can see, there's a negative relationship and that's the negative beta that the, the, the curriculum is talking about. So it is possible to have negative um, uh, beta 
it all it does all it means is that in respect to some other index, all right, whether that index is interest rate S and P five hundred or uh, Russo two thousand or Russo two thousand inverse, right? Um, um, it, it has a negative negative beta. That means as the as the index goes up, the actual uh, return for the uh, of the stock or of the bond price will actually goes down. So that's why it has a negative. Um, relationship and you can see it from the slope so that's why it's negative beta